Hi there, I'm Richard Horsburgh. I work for Pendrick Heights Services and I'm the Contracts Manager for the Rope Access Division. The Rope Access side of the company is a sort of lighter weight, faster approach, if you like, to gaining access to problematic areas. Um, we'll take lightweight ropes uh, based on mountaineering techniques which have been developed into industry and we can get to places quickly, safely and for, important for some clients quite cheaply and assess the situation from there. And then if we have to then take it further by installing scaffolds or anything like that, then we can do that. I left school at 17, whatever it was, whatever you do, with a few grades and hires and stuff like that. I ended up working for British Telecom and telephone engineer to trade. Um, it was obviously very secure. Uh, there was space for manoeuvrability. And to put not to find a point in it, the money was good as well. So, I mean, it was, it was going to be a very secure sort of stable working environment if you like if that's what you're after and at the time I suppose that must have been what I was after as I was working with BT I met a very good friend of mine who introduced me to climbing and mountaineering and basically that kind of took over and changed the whole format of how I look at life and, and what I've done with my life basically and that's kind of set up my whole life from there on in I got more and more adventurous I wanted to do more and more climbing and the places I wanted to go and wanted to see I couldn't do in a normal five day a week job with a certain allocated time off and things like that. I was getting more and more involved in the mountaineering world and an opportunity arose to start a mountaineering shop which seemed the best of both worlds. Do a bit of instructing, run a shop, make hundreds of millions of pounds and then do nothing but go climbing mountains. Obviously the reality isn't quite the same as that but you know it was a it was a road to then change career, a radical change of career and go and do something that I really wanted to do and take it from there. I think when I started the shop, I mean, it was obviously a, a serious buzz of excitement. There was a lot, a lot at stake, you know, I had a house at stake and all that sort of stuff on it. Um, for the first year or so, I, I'd, I'd say I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, but what I found is a lot of self-employed people will find that perhaps it curtails your own time. And what I found I was doing, I was talking about climbing to a lot of people in the shop. I was selling a lot of nice kit to people. I was hearing about people going on nice trips and stuff. And my own time was being limited and what I could actually do. Um, so within a couple of years I started to think, is this really for me? And, and you know, I started thinking about alternatives as well. Through contacts that I'd made, climbing contacts and, and, and selling equipment, I got the opportunity to carry out some very basic rope access work. So that gave me, gave me the chance to move to the next phase, which was to, you know, make a living through climbing as opposed to selling mountaineering kit. When I started, if you like, becoming a, if not full-time settler, a money-earning mountaineer, instructor, whatever you want to call it. I think, again, for a while it, it, it was fine and stuff, but I was never the best mountaineer in the world. I was never the greatest mountaineer in the world, but I was competent. And I mean, I was thoroughly enjoying what I was doing. But after, you know, a good few years, I, I started to wonder if, you know, I was overdoing it. If, you know, does, was it taking the edge off my personal climbing? And I felt that it was a little bit that I wasn't looking forward to going climbing personally as much as I was because I'd been out for the previous three, four days with clients doing the same old stuff and things. As so the transition started to happen, it was starting to do more and more industrial work and less and less mountaineering work. Um, I don't know if it was a conscious decision or just a subconscious decision that I'd done that. And then that left me to actually enjoy my climbing more. And, and I, I started, you know, I went on two or three expeditions and stuff and thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that because I wasn't trying to make my living on the mountains as well. I wasn't spending all my times on the mountains. I think I'm in a very fortunate position at the moment with my job at the moment. Um, the variety of life uh, the variety of jobs that you come, the problem solving that you you come across when you're doing these jobs just keeps you always on the go. There's never anything boring and I've managed to progress that from working on squads to running jobs to where I am now, which is pretty much, uh, you know, a separate company within the, the, the Pendrick flag, if you like. We're, we're creating our own working environment, if you like, with people that you can trust, people you like, and, and we're all making a reasonable living at it. So if we can keep doing this and keep expanding, then I, I don't really see any great problem with that. Uh, you know, it's a nice situation to be in, it really is.